And today we're going over some legal terms. I have my card here as always to make sure I don't miss anything for you. And today we're going to talk about real covenants. What is a real covenant? Now, if you're in real estate, you probably heard this term before. And a real covenant is defined as a promise that concerns the use of land. Let me repeat that for you. The, a promise that concerns the use of, of land. Again, a promise that concerns the use of land. There's two kinds of real covenants. There's an affirmative covenant and a restrictive covenant. An affirmative covenant promises to do something. A restrictive covenant promises not to do something. Um, these are used a lot in land development deals um, and a lot of times uh, sub-developments or um, subdivisions. They have real covenants in them. So if you ever bought a, a, a condo, they definitely have real covenants in there. Um, if you ever bought, again, part of a subdivision of property where you see all the houses the same, there may be an affirmative com covenant that says that you have to have the property a certain way or a restrictive covenant that says you can't do this. You can't subdivide your property. You can't put anything but a 6,000 square foot home here, right? That's a restrictive covenant. That means you can't it's a promise not to do something. So again, a covenant, a real covenant is a promise that concerns the use of land. And real covenants are usually put into land contracts or into the deed when they're transferring the property or into bylaws of a subdivision or a condo association or a landholders association um, or a real estate association, right? Um, again, a real covenant is a promise that concerns the use of land, and there's two kinds. There's an affirmative covenant that promises to do something, and a restrictive covenant that promises not to do something. So, for example, a restrictive covenant could say, I promise to not use this land for any other purpose than agricultural, right? So, if you transfer a, warrant, a deed to the next buyer, and in that deed you put this restrictive covenant that they can only use the land for farming corn, let's say. Um, if they happen to use that land for not farming corn, they're breaking that covenant and there may be a suit for damages, if any. So again, these contracts run with the land. So when you, you have this contract in a deed or in a land contract, that means it's going to keep going on to the next purchaser, the subsequent purchaser. Um, and again, they're really big. They're big used in associations and subdivisions. So when you see a subdivision, you see all the houses the same way. The reason why those people have to keep that house the same way is because of the real covenants in the deed or the transfer contract or the land contract that they signed or the subdivision agreement that's has bylaws. So again, that's real covenants. I hope this was helpful to you guys. Subscribe to the page, share the page if you like it and tune in for another video about land law, land investing, real estate investing, and much more. Talk soon, guys.